pouring on to work if it's if it's not very good for dipping. So, for instance, I think it's yours with a wavy edge mm. on it. We could actually put some blocks or something over the top, get some slip in the jug and pour onto it. That okay. would be another possibility for yours, okay. but it's got a diff different rim on it. Um, I'm just saying that because quite a good way of, of dipping is to put a bit of tape around the top there and then you would dip in until it's halfway up that so you know that you've got good coverage of slip all the way around. You would leave that tape on and you can dip it depending on how big it is and the size of your hands by just putting your hand inside and going down like that. And then you leave that on till you do the same thing in the glaze, then you take that off. Do you wipe the bottom of it? You wipe the bottom of it? After we've got the glaze on then we'll clean it off but don't do that before you um, until we get to that stage. I mean, if you want it totally black on the on the base, if you want a big black area like I showed you on one of those pots there, then you can actually mask off around the base as well. Um, what well, you've got to watch for sometimes when you take the slip, the tape off, is that some of the slip and glaze may have gone under that tape. Mm. So you've really got to just have a look around and maybe have a cocktail stick to hand and just mm. clean that off. If you start using a sponge to try and clean it off, the chances are that you might get a little bit of glaze on your sponge and you'll drag that across the surface there. You won't see it, but it will come out and will mark your pots in some sort of way. So clean it off with them when it's dry is a much better thing. Do we treat the masking table after the glazing? Masking? After the glazing, usually. Yeah. <laughs> you may want to vary the technique in some yeah. way to do something special where you wouldn't. Mm -hmm. um, so You've got your, you've also got some glazing tongs here, which can be used to hold more difficult pieces that you, you're not using that on like that. So you can, and these will be used so that they've got three prongs, one side and one the other. So usually you would have the single prong on the better side of your work. So if I was going, if I was doing it with that, I would have that like that. So only one prong is going through the slip or the glaze like that and to hold it in that sort of way. With this slip it's fairly awkward because we're using it for a number of techniques so I want to be able to use it for the uh, where we want a thin glaze as well as where we want a thicker glaze. It's got a specific gravity of 1.3 and if you're mixing up slips and glazes it's worth sort of knowing what the gravity is that you're using because then you can get consistency between batches um, and particularly when you're doing tests and things like that. Yeah. So with this we're going in for between six and eight seconds. <coughs> and come slowly out. Don't come fast out otherwise it can tend to pull the slip in some sort of way and you'll get, you'll get that effect on there. Um, and with this, because it's going to have glaze put on afterwards, we would now let this dry off, similar thing into the glaze, and then to remove the tapes. So, how are you going to remove these little, little tapes on there? So do think about that when you're putting them on the work now. So, what Janet normally does, she hasn't done this one though, is to actually leave a little bit right at the edge. So you can just get hold of the edge with a copter stick or something like that and pin it up and then do a little, 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 it all comes mm. off like that. So do think about how you're going to get it off when it's got slip and glaze on it and you might not even be able to see at the end after that. So and the order, and it's, it's the crossing. Each other. And the crossing, oh, yeah. exactly. Whoops, it's got to another one there. So oh, yeah. which one you're going to take off first. Yeah, so you've got all those sort of things to think about because usually we get to that and I do it myself. No, no, no. <laughs> then again. And then it'll just start drying off. So it's done that now. And then you can gently take that away. <coughs> Let that little hole dry off a bit and then just gently cover that over like that. Don't worry that it's a thick, don't try and get that thick blob off there or you'll just remove a whole chunk and then mm. that means the glaze will go onto the work. But you just go over enough to stop the glaze going through. Similarly if you've got tapes on there which have come up a bit, whilst it's just a little bit damp, you can usually manage to push that down to stop the glaze going underneath. So that would be put to one side um, to dry and then um, we'd have the glaze put on it probably tomorrow. So, um, Cabby, this yeah. is yours. I'm just worried about that end of the tape bit we had. Okay, discussed. so you can go back.
back and sort it out. Yeah, <laughs> where it is now. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, um, so you can see it now, can't you? Yeah. Uh, which is well, an end. Have you got more than one end? No. You must have two ends. Well, yeah, no, you have. <laughs> <haven't> you? <laughs> no, you have. <laughs> right. Okay. So there's definitely one there. <laughs> Okay, I mean, what it's mm. not too bad with this to be honest because you will be able to go along yeah. with your cocktail stick, and yeah. it doesn't matter yeah. if you okay. knock the slipping blade off here and find that in there. Mm. And it's difficult to do much else because yeah. you've really got nowhere to hide it away. No. Um, if you had tapes all over this, as some of you are doing, and you had a, a thicker piece around the top, yeah. then you could bring them all up to the top, or take them all down to the bottom. This is often what people do, and tuck them in here somewhere, okay. because the base is going to be totally clear of slip and glaze. So, and then you could find the ends in, in that sort of way. Okay, mm. so to think about it in that way. But I think what you would do with this one now is you would just go around the rim, gently with a cocktail stick, find your end. Yeah. Nothing else, much else you can do, no. and it doesn't matter if you knock any slip and glaze off this part because no, you, you don't want to go anyway. Absolutely. <laughs> so, okay. Well, I right. knew that. <laughs> you knew that. I knew that. Good. Really. So we're going to dip that one using these, I think. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So with a bowl or something like that, it's going to go in. We're going to go for about six, seven seconds, um, and then as it comes out, you're going to try and get all the slip out of it because we don't want sort of thick stuff in there um, and I don't recommend double dipping or anything like that it's best to try and get it right the first time if you double dip usually it'll sort of start sucking it off and you'll get a differential on there but if sometimes you have to do it um, if you bring out the bowl like that and there's a little piece of it which hasn't been covered with the slip then just get some on your finger and just gently sort of go into that particular area and just touch it into that area that's usually enough to do that Similarly with the glaze, actually. So where would you, where would you put the tongs on the bowl? Okay. Does it get a heavy one in there? Yeah. So um, I would guess the main sort of feature is going to be the inside of this yeah. bowl. So I would tend to be um, put it like that. You've got to be a bit careful with bowls, not to touch the rim of it and to hold them yeah. fairly firmly. Yeah. Um, and I think these are different lengths. Yes, these are. So okay. For, for different bowls, you know, the longer ones maybe may be better, but they're also more difficult to get a good solid grip on. Okay, so I'm trying to make sure I first go. So you do have to make sure, but you can see it's quite wobbly on that yeah. one. So, so I tend to use the smaller ones, I think, if I can. Yeah, that's quite good. That's not going to touch the rim, which is what I was worried about. Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. Um, the other thing is. Just give it a little stir if nobody's sort of done it just before you because this slip does settle very, very fast. And if it's starting to settle, there'll be a watery layer at the top. And if you've gone in and you've and that's going on your work, then that excuse me, won't give you as an effective seal for the glaze as if you've got a good layer on there. So just we'll leave that in there. But don't go too mad with it, otherwise we'll have lots of air bubbles in it, <coughs> lots of bubbles probably in there on your work and you may want it, but perhaps the next person will. Okay. <laughs>